When a test engineer collects data from a vibrating object, that data is collected and displayed in the time domain. The time domain data is a record of the simple vibration amplitudes or pressure differences that occurred over a specific period of time. In this video, I want to look at two different time domain waveforms. A waveform is a presentation or a display of a signal's instantaneous amplitude as a function of time, often displayed on an oscilloscope or on signal processing software. The first time domain waveform is from a vibrating tuning fork, a tuning fork with a labeled frequency of 256 hertz. Note the simplicity of the waveform. It's close to a pure sine tone. When you examine the time domain waveform, you can tell that the time from one peak to another peak, one cycle, is about 0.004 seconds. From say this peak, one, to this peak, 0.004 seconds, roughly. And that would correspond to a frequency since period and frequency are inverses, a frequency of about 250 hertz. And that makes sense because the tuning fork is 256 hertz. When the time domain waveform is transformed into the frequency domain, you can see that there is primarily frequency content at 257 hertz and some content at overtones above 257 hertz. This peak here, this frequency, is our main frequency, 257, 256, which is the tuning fork's value, and there is some overtones. But for the most part, you see the frequency of that one tone. What this demonstrates is that a simple vibration, like a pure tone from a tuning fork, can be represented in the time domain and it is even possible in that time domain to get a good idea of the frequency content by examining this waveform. However, the time domain waveform does not clearly indicate the harmonic content that is clearly visible in the frequency domain. The second time domain waveform that I want to look at is from a random vibration test of that fixture we've been working with the fixture with three arms, three beams, and note the complexity of this waveform compared to that of the tuning fork. It's very, very difficult to look at the time domain waveform here and determine what are the dominant frequencies. But when the time domain waveform is transformed into a frequency domain, you can see much more clearly where the frequency content is at. In fact, when we look at the transmissibility graph, it becomes very apparent that there is significant vibration at 18 hertz, 33 hertz, and 55, basically 56 hertz, which are the natural resonant frequencies of those three beams. What this demonstrates is that the time domain is really the combination of many sinusoidal waves. Each sine wave with its own particular frequency and particular amplitude all combined to make very complex time domain waveform. Converting the time domain waveform to the frequency domain waveform is significantly helpful in identifying what specific frequencies of vibrations are found in the signal. In summary, Time domain waveforms generally should be converted to frequency domain waveforms so that information such as frequency content can be more easily observed.